Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by the Guild. I am Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage. We'll start things off on today's show with some news on the players that the Cowboys signed yesterday. One of whom, some of you guys probably already know, that is Darius Jackson, the running back, was a six-round pick back in 2016 by the Cowboys. With his signing, that entire 2016 draft class is now back on the roster for Dallas. He joined the Browns after he was cut to make room for Darren McFadden, but he never played a single snap for them. He signed on Wednesday, had one practice rep in which he went too wide, didn't get the handoff, and then sat the rest of the day. It's not a great start for Mr. Jackson, but it's good to have him back on the Cowboys. Some other signings then for Dallas, Antoine Woods. He comes over from the Tennessee Titans. He was actually cut about a week ago with an injury settlement with the Cowboys. I really think that Woods is healthy enough to compete for that one technique role. But the Cowboys don't have much right now in that nose guard spot. Woods, a former undrafted free agent out of USC, could be that guy potentially for the Cowboys. He'll at least get a chance to compete to make room for Woods, by the way. The Cowboys cut to Quentin Osborne. I know some of you guys were big fans of him. Looks like he didn't do much to impress the Cowboys early on. Next up at wide receiver, Mikel McKay comes over. He has bounced around the NFL quite a bit in his NFL time. Originally signed with the Colts out of Cincinnati for going undrafted. Also played for the Jags, the Broncos, Titans, and the Chicago Bears. Now is on his sixth NFL team in a little over two years. So crazy there. Does bring good size at six foot four, but he's not the greatest athlete in terms of agility and top end speed. Has a tough path to make the roster at a deep wide receiver group. All right, those are the four guys the Cowboys signed. Here are the guys they also cut as well. Ed Shockley, he was out. We made note of that on Tuesday's show. Same with Malik Earl. But to Quentin Osborne, Jay Robertson, those two are gone. I know some of you guys had high hopes for Osborne. Looks like he did not make much of an impression on the Cowboys. So, folks, of these four guys, if it's going to be anyone, which signing will make the biggest impact? I think upside-wise, I know a lot of you guys like Darius Jackson, but I think that Antoine Woods has the high pedigree coming out of USC and fills a bigger need for the Cowboys because they need somebody there at the defensive tackle spot. I think Antoine Woods, if it's anybody of this group, has the best chance to make that impact. All right, on to some more news. This one, not so good. Charles Tapper, he has suffered a concussion, and it's just a, the latest in a long line of injuries for Tapper, who simply cannot stay healthy. He was the Cowboys' original fourth-round pick in 2016, taken before Dak Prescott would or was, but he just has been unable to actually stay on the field. Just two career games because of injuries. The upside is still there, but he's fighting for a roster spot right now, and the injury does not help his chances of actually making the roster. Hopefully he comes back soon, and in the end, I think Jason Garrett kind of said it best. He was asked about Tapper's concussion. He said he didn't really know how a player gets a concussion during OTAs. But that's where we are with Charles Tapper. Hopefully he's able to come back very soon. More defensive line news. This one also not so good. David Irving, well, he is still out of shape, has not practiced yet in OTAs because he's not ready to. And this is actually very concerning for me for David Irving. The way that Garrett talks about it and Marinelli and Taco Charlton said they would welcome him back. He's not gone. He's still there at OTA. He's just, he's just not practicing. Was reportedly up to th 320 pounds. Was down to 308 in April. Was apparently still not in shape. It's been a rough offseason for David Irving between not being in shape, between the false domestic violence allegations made against him by his now ex-girlfriend. There's a lot to handle for Irving. But I want to know from you guys, how concerned are you about David Irving? Frankly, the longer he goes without being on the field in OTAs, the more I'm concerned about it. It's, it's a contract year for David Irving. This is supposed to be best shape of life season, and apparently he's not in shape at all right now. So that's a big concern for me on that end. All right, one final news item. This one is a positive one. Randy Gregory. Yes, he has indeed applied for reinstatement. So some good news on that end for Randy Gregory. We heard for weeks, almost months, that, oh, it's going to come. Gregory's appeal will come for the Cowboys here very shortly. It's going to come in. It'll, it was going to come in at the beginning of May and then the middle of May. And then it finally, they didn't say it actually came in. They didn't really announce it. Stephen Jones was, was talking and said that the NFL has his, his reinstatement papers. So it's officially happened, the actual application. 
Now we play an even longer waiting game. It could be up to two months before we hear a word on what Randy Gregory's exact status is, if the NFL will ap uh, approve or reject his reinstatement uh, appeal. But he's reportedly passed drug tests for months, so you would imagine should be good news for Gregory once the NFL makes its decision.